Okay guys, tonight I'm trying something a little different. Uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, I'm using a different software to record it. See if it comes out okay. The software I was using just, I don't know what it is. Everything turns out grainy. I don't know if it's like solely my, my, my lighting or what. So it looks a little different. All right, so I actually have someone asked me a question in my YouTube comments. So I'm going to read that question really quickly. This is what led me to go on and thinking about the soul. Do we have one? Well, I know we have one. I don't think that's the question. but So, Little Skork. I hope I'm saying that right. I'm sorry if I got it wrong. What makes our souls corporeal with our bodies? Can we use understanding of this to create robotic body parts that will behave and feel just like real body parts connected to the soul? And he's mostly asking this as intended for people who have, you know, amputated limbs or they have neurological problems, which can cause different, different physical disabilities. So I think in order to answer that fully or have any sort of idea of where to go with that, you have to understand what the soul is. Okay. So I went to the Bible to sort of figure that out, sort of have an idea. So I think I'm going to step back actually and kind of go at this from a different angle. So before I was a Christian, I believe we had a soul that was, there was just like a spirit part of us where that resided in like the center of our bodies. And that's just what it was. Um, it's the part of us that lived on forever that, um, depending on how you believe jumped from body to body or, uh, just, moved on to the next part of this life. So what the Bible says though is a little different. The word soul is a feminine noun and it means that which breathes. It's the seed of our emotions, appetites, passions, or the activity of mind, will, and character. It's the emotional, the more emotional side of ourselves. So the same emotions that cause us to say, well, I don't want to do that is not my will to do so is considered the soul. So, uh, I went totally using Genesis chapter two, verse seven, where it talks about God breathing into man, a soul. And then he's a, he's alive basically. So this, so this became interesting because basically, excuse me, the life, right? When it says he breathes life in him. It just means living thing. It's used as an adjective to describe Adam when God breathed life into him. It means alive, living, lively, vigorous, you know, means, you know, not laying there doing nothing. He was alive. I mean, that's what it means. Um, so I just went through what soul means. So that means he's, a, he's alive with a will of his own the character of his own his mind is on there's activity there he has emotions passions appetites and he breathes <laughs> so the other thing i looked up i looked up breathe is it says god breathes right and this is where it gets a little tricky tricky because it's also a feminine noun which also simply means soul uh but it's also been used to mean our minds and that's Proverbs 20, 27 is where it's, it's meant, it's where it's used as our minds. So Proverbs, that verse reads like this. The spirit of man is the candle of the Lord, searching all the inward parts of the belly. So basically what I'm, whenever I read that, it says to me is interesting because what it, it seems to be saying is basically God uses the mind to help us sort out our baser desires are our, our like to change our wills to do all that sort of thing sorry there we go and so we can see that in the bible a lot of the times where he's saying you know you need to watch what you think watch who you're around because you're going to think like them your mind has is a big deal it's part of your soul part of what makes up a soul which is you and me 
what we do know about us is that a little bit of ourselves lives in every part of us. I'll have links in the description to a University of North Te Texas study where they catalog that the memories and desires of heart transplant patients change once they receive their new heart. All right, so I've heard this before. I've seen it on an episode of, oh, what's it called? Unsolved Mysteries, where they have their, this is weird, but it happens, it's a thing, where people get these heart transplants, or they even get like, it's not even, even heart transplants sometimes. Sometimes it's just like a liver or kidney transplant. And all of a sudden, and you know, they don't know anything about their transplant person, like whoever they got the kidney or the heart or whatever from, they don't know anything about them. But what happens is they end up liking things that that person liked. They end up changing completely. The one that they did on Unsolved Mysteries, this guy could care less. He didn't like snow. He doesn't like cold weather. He doesn't like any of that. Could care less about any of it. And then he gets his heart transplant and all of a sudden he's an avid skier and he loves the snow and all this other stuff. Now, some people contribute that to well, he had some sort of, um, he had a major, you know, he had a heart transplant. That's a major thing happened to you, and that's why he changed. And, but they can't really, they don't have documentation of people changing to that degree with the same trauma and change of life, things like that. So it's interesting. A lot of people say the heart is the seat of the soul. That's 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 where we are. When we trans we transplant our heart, then you've transplanted us and we go off into whoever else and we have effect on that. So that's what some people say. So to answer that question can be kind of tricky because I don't think I I don't think that we can transfer a soul into something that's inanimate, like robotic stuff. Souls are something given to living human beings, not to animals. They have like a spirit maybe, but they don't have the same thing where it's like God doesn't breathe into them. He just gives them life. He just says, you live. And there we go. So, oh, sorry about that. So, I don't think this is something that we can do with inanimate objects. <laughs> it's something God gives to, think, to people. It's something God says, okay, this is what I'm going to do here. Uh, it's something he specifically set out to give us. I think that your heart's in the right place, but I just don't think this is something that we can do. So that's all I really wanted to say about that. I had to do some, some digging on that because I just pretty much assumed that soul was you know, a part of us, it's one of that, one of those mis mysteries about the human body we don't really understand. Like, uh, why do we run on an electric current? When you test us, we have, uh, we run at a certain ohm. It's like 0.5 or something like that. My brother and I, my, my husband, we're all just talking about this. Where our brains, in order for our neurons to fire, they are, they're firing electric charges if you that's why like um those paddles work to start our hearts again because our hearts and everything run on an electric charge so we're kind of like a battery in some ways um but not exactly so we're a very strange creature <laughs> that god made and uh, we're totally totally different from anything else so to answer your question I don't think we can. I think a soul is made for the physical body and for the person. And I think, again, it's interesting that these words are feminine nouns. I looked that up. Why does that matter? Why does it matter that, that the noun is feminine, right? So that means they're talking about a feminine thing. So seat of emotions, appetite, passion, activity of the mind, will, character. The word soul is a feminine noun, right? The, um, let me see. Oh, sorry, I'm using my notes here. Something else is a feminine noun. The other one's also a feminine noun, which just, which just means you're talking about a female. And there's this concept 
that I had at first rejected, but now I'm reconsidering, where it talks about not that God is a girl, but that God encompasses both male, the needs of a person for, from both male and female standpoints. Like he can do what a dad needs to do, and he can also do what a mom needs to do as far as caring, creation, and all this other stuff. So, so in that way, he is everything to us. And it, so that's why I think that's why I think that's a feminine thing because that's part of the creation side of God. Then you have the the stricter um, <clears throat> what is that? Like your dad spanks you, your mom hugs you, that kind of thing. Discipline. Thank you. Sorry, my husband's in here too. <laughs> so if you hear stuff going on in the background, that's him. So God has discipline, but He also has a hug. God's loving, but He's also chastising. So both of those things. And then we represent that. And women are more caring. They want to they want to pat you on the back, say it's okay, and you'll be fine. And the dad wants wants to say, you know, hey, just get up. <laughs> He's not gonna pat you on the back. He's not gonna hug you and all that because you don't really need it. What you need is just to be told, you know, in some cases, what you need is just to be told, you know, get up, you're fine. Just do it again. And when you get all emotional, you need someone who has that other side where it's like, stop, <laughs> stop being so emotional. This is not as big of a deal as you think it is. So that's what I think about the soul. I know we have one. I don't think there's any question that we do. It's part of the mystery of who we are as human beings. It's given to us by God. <clears throat> and I believe it can only be given to us, to us by God. It's the only thing, person, whatever, that he's chosen to do. I don't really see a need to put it into anything else because I think it's how he, it's part of how he connects us to himself. So that's all I got to say here, guys. I will, in my description, have a bunch of links and everything else where I, the, the verses I read, how I got here and all that so that you can see it too and decide for yourself. All right, guys. Until tomorrow, sorry this is so late. I do want to really quickly put a shout out for a prayer request. Our car is kaput. She, uh, <laughs> feminine noun again. She, um, <clears throat> basically there's a lot wrong with the car. And we're just to the point now where we're like, we don't, if we were going to fix it, we don't have the money to do it. And one of the problems is we don't, we don't even know what it is. <laughs> So just pray that we can find a reliable vehicle and we can that we can do what we need to do with. All right. Thank you very much for everybody who does pray. And I will talk to you later. Bye.